Hello, I'm Sue Stockdale, Deputy Editor of Coaching Perspectives magazine, and I'm here with Hetty Einzig, our editor of the magazine, to find out what's coming up in the next edition of the magazine. So Hetty, I understand that it's around ethics, values and reflective practice, the theme for the next issue. Why are these things important for coaching professionals to think about? Hi, Sue. Uh, great to be having this chat um, because I really do believe these are incredibly important issues, not just for coaches, but since we're focusing on coaching, um, coaches are trained to focus in on the detail, to focus in on their client and to dig down underneath what's being said and to really drill down to the answers uh, using questions and reflection. We often don't, many of us don't take the time to open up and look at the wider context. And uh, so particularly important for coaches working, as we mostly do, within either public sector or business or large global corporates or within teams and so on. There's always a system. And the moment there's a system, well, indeed, when there's individuals, it's uh, there's issues around, are we making the right choices? What about conflicting agendas, conflicting needs? How do we navigate our way through those kinds of dilemmas? So I'm very excited about the upcoming issue because it's full of really juicy uh, stories about how coaches have, have dealt with these issues and, and some really hot tips and tools so that we begin to think about these issues. And that's the other bit of it, the thinking time. That's definitely an important factor, Hetty. And you're an experienced coach. Can you give us an example of what some of these issues might be from your own experience and how they can be resolved? Well, one issue that I reflected on, it's actually talked about in, uh, just to name one of many excellent articles, our deep dive is by Donna Ladkin, who's professor of uh, leadership ethics and has just moved back to the States uh, from being professor at Plymouth University. And she she uh, talks about uh, an issue that comes up when you, as a coach, get given unasked, uh, un, un, without you requesting, a piece of information that you really shouldn't be privy to. So, for example, you're coaching someone and someone stops you in the corridor as you're on your way to meet meet the client and says, oh, by the way, um, you know, really bad news, but they're going to be laid off next, you know, in a couple of weeks. Well, what do you do with that information? Is it unethical to keep coaching the client as if you didn't know this? But it's all equally unethical to share the information ahead of the fact, uh, uh, you know, you don't know whether, when and where their line manager or their boss is going to share it. So that's one very specific issue. Another issue that uh, comes up is where you get conflicting agendas within a team. So you get called in to do uh, team coaching, for example, and um you discover that the head of the team doesn't really have their heart in it. She or he might be using this exercise as a way of, as it were, kind of flushing out people she feels are underperformers and um, as, a, as a sort of way of, uh, of making them uh, look bad and therefore kind of moving them on. There's all sorts of things like that going on. And then, of course, um, as has happened to me, uh, you're coaching somebody and they they put on your desk, as it were, you know, they bring to the session an outright case of fraud and malpractice. What do you do then? Those, so those are, are some of the issues. Those are tough uh, dilemmas that coaches face. And as you know, Hetty, we, we are often working on our own. So how do how does a coach seek to address those challenges? Well, very good question, Sue. It's really, really important. And I know you and I both share a passion for supervision and the importance of coaches themselves feeling and being embedded in a supportive system. You know, we live in a world where they've been has been rocked by some very big um, uh, sort of seismic shifts, if you like, in our uh, uh, foundations of authority. It used to be that you could kind of look to government or you could look to the legal profession or you could look to your faith, your, your religious uh, institutions for a steer on how to behave in the world, how to live, as Aristotle said, a good life. And a lot of those have been seriously, seriously undermined, uh, exposed as being fallible or even downright uh, 
uh, corrupt uh, in the last, let's say, let's be generous, 20 years. But in our recent, in very recent years, we've also had been rocked by the financial crises and the uncovering that people are often uh, acting in very, very selfish and downright corrupt ways. And I, it, it seems to me that coaches uh, start from a fantastic base of wanting to bring out the best in their clients. And by the best, we mean that the best in every sense, not just high performance, but the best, the best that that person can be in their lives. And for that, as you say, it's tough. We also need to be supported uh, by our uh, infrastructure, of which supervision is a key part, to explore how our own responses to these dilemmas, our own responses to what does it mean for us to be the best person? When do we, you know, when do we need to summon up the courage to call, to whistleblow, as it were, to say, no, this is, this is actually not acceptable. So supervision is an important facet of being able definitely. to deal with ethical dilemmas. Definitely, definitely important. And I think that's, it's a, it's a big part of supervision training. It certainly was uh, in my training for supervision, that how would we deal with X, Y, and Z? And, you know, we looked at case studies, we have deep discussions about what would you do if? And so that's I, been very helpful. So I'm sure th those listening to, to this recording will be intrigued to get a taste of what might be in the magazine that can help them. C can you give us some idea of the, some of the features that will be included in the next edition? I can indeed. And, and one of the things that that's, uh, I love about this issue, just to sort of slightly sidetrack, is is that um, it's it's such a juicy issue. Anybody who likes thrillers or anybody who likes thrillers or detective stories will uh, will really find lots to entertain them here because um, it's 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 the kind the kind of uh, stuff that comes up you have to work your way through and um, uh, look at, you know, finding your own answers to some of these things. I am just looking for the contents list. So, as I said, we've got a fantastic piece by Donna Labkin. We've got um, a wonderful uh, little history uh, of uh, how how our ethical models, if you like, came about from Joanna Yordanu, who's written a terrific book about values in coaching. Um, we've got uh, a, a piece by Kath Bishop, Olympic sportsman in in rowing, Olympic uh, uh, Olympian, uh, I think more than once. But you'd be you'd be the best person to correct me on that, Sue, uh, about ethics and values in sport. Uh, another another piece by Roger Steer, who talks specifically about business. And then we've got a couple of pieces um, by uh, coaches and supervisors themselves in, in the form of journey, in the form of dialogue, in the form of reflection uh, about, you know, how do we uh, what's the underpinnings of the codes of ethics? Because it isn't just a question of ticking the boxes and following the rules or following the rules and ticking the boxes. It's also about time to reflect. And then a terrific interview by yourself with Maya Hu Chan around global leadership. And I think that uh, looks at the global dimension of uh, and bringing ethics into the leadership field. Uh, Clive uh, Steeper has gathered together another terrific roster of coaches uh, who talk about um, mostly about reflection and the need to, to not just, as I'm saying, follow the rules, but reflect themselves. So you've got to people like um, Neil, Neil Scotton and uh, uh, Abudi Shabi and others talking there. Um, and a lovely piece from one of our board members, uh, Jeff Abbott from Australia, looking at existential philosophy and how that has contributed to it. So, you know, I could go on. There's some tremendous pieces in there. Um, uh, a piece from France, a piece from Malaysia uh, about conscious leadership. And um, yeah, you know, uh, and, and the first of a new column around team coaching. And what are some of the dilemmas that we face in team coaching by Declan Woods? Sounds like there's a real cornucopia of interesting articles there, Hetty. And I get the sense from what you're saying that there's not always a right answer. There's no black and white way of necessarily dealing with some of these issues. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that's very, very true. And that's, I guess, why I think they're exciting. This is an exciting and uh, rich area uh, for those, you know, countries like a challenge. We like to uh, grapple with things. And I think that um, ethics and values are a real juicy area to grapple with and bring our own capacity to reflect. Brilliant. I look forward to reading it. Thanks for your time, Hetty. You're welcome. Take care. Thank you. I'm still recording, Hetty. I just wanted to add on to the end because there was mid midway through you talked about Kath Bishop and you called her an, an, an Olympic sportsman. So I'm oh, just wondering dear. if you could just re-record that bit just to give give that yeah. heads up about Kath Bishop and call her an Olympic yeah, athlete I or something like that. I'll call her an Olympic athlete. That was a terrible, terrible mistake. Thank you for picking that one up. And is she more than once Olympian? Uh, she's competing in about three happen. Olympics, but I, I think just if you just say uh, an Olympic, Olympic athlete, yeah, that, yeah, or Olympic roar to be Olympic specific, roar. yeah, Olympic roar. Uh, so, so if I paste, then, do you want to paste that in? Yeah, or I will do. do I'll, it. I'll ask you the question again, and then you just say about the Kath Bishop bit, and then he'll be able to edit that into the right right piece. Okay. okay. Um. So, what is upcoming in the magazine, Hetty? We've got a lot of terrific pieces. So, for example. Uh, a lovely piece by a really juicy piece by Kath Bishop, Olympic athlete, about ethics and values in sport. She uh, was, a, was an Olympic rower and she looks at, at some of the um, sort of uh, more um, delicate issues, if you like, around, you know, it's not always cut and dry. There's a right and a wrong. And she talks about behaviours and attitudes that need changing in sport and how that's being done. Brilliant. Thanks. That's great, Hetty. I'll stop.